going on here? Ban him from the tube! YouTubers have been building cars since the beginning of YouTube, but lately, they've been getting a little out of hand. Today, we're gonna take a look at some of the most ambitious, impressive, and dare I say, outrageous builds on this website that we call our home. I'm James, this cutie right here is the modelist, and this is the d d d d Hello. My name's Riley, and I'm a friend of the channel, and I'm also the artist that made the Donut Media Mural. It's finally done after so many sleepless nights, snacks, Red Bulls, ups and downs, highs and lows. Now it's finally here, and I'm so excited you guys get to see it and have your own version of it as a sticker. It's not gonna be available for very long, so if you want it, I suggest you go to donutmedia.com right now and get you one. Just like the video we did about engine swaps, we're gonna include the links to all these channels in the description below because we like to spread the love. We like those channels and if you like this channel, you might like them too. We got a lot of ground to cover. So let's kick it off with a very humble Toyota RAV4 built by none other than my personal friend. I have his phone number. The legendary <laughs> Steph Papadakis. Now why would a man behind the most winning Formula Drift team in history and some of the fastest Japanese drag racing cars of the 90s, build this downright dainty little compact SUV. The answer is simple, people, all right? Off-roading is probably the most fun thing that you can do in a car. Unlike the insane thousand horsepower builds he usually does, this is just a bare bones little four x four with a manual transmission. Now this isn't built to be the fastest truck up the mountain, but that's okay because look how much fun this man is having in this little thing. And that's why it's going on the monolist. Now this RAV4 is easily the most tame vehicle on the list, but surprisingly, it's not the smallest. That honor goes to the Grind Hard Plumbing's 100 horsepower 4x4 power wheel. You know how much horsepower a regular power wheels has? I do, because I Googled it. It's 0.26 horsepower. That's a 38,000% increase over stock. But if I'm being honest, this thing doesn't have very much power wheels left in it at all. It's just got Mostly, Mo Powell, baby! It's essentially a fully custom go-kart with a motorcycle engine strapped to it. And if you're wondering how these guys are so good at building motorcycle-powered power wheels, it's because they built like seven of them. One of them goes 90 miles per hour in a plastic vehicle built for a toddler. I drove a tiny car once. It was actually at Steph Papadakis' shop. And let me tell you, it didn't go so well. So the dudes at Grindhard, may God have mercy on your souls. Good luck with everything. Hit us up. Now we got a few more trucks to cover in what I call the future. But for now, let's switch it up and take a look at a 1995 Audi S6 wagon built by a dude named Joel Francisco. The city was named after him, I assume. So what's so special about this here wagon? Well, let me play a clip so you can hear it for yourself. So this thing came from the factory with a turbocharged five cylinder, which is a great motor. That wasn't enough cylinders for my boy, Joel Francisco. He wanted more cylinders. He wanted double the cylinders. So he did the completely normal thing that any of us would do. And he took a 5.2 liter V10 out of a 2007 Audi S6 and managed to fit it under the hood and hook up all the crap and make all the crap work. And the funny thing about this engine is that it's basically identical to the V10 used in the Lamborghini Gallardo. It's basically two of those five cylinder engines kissing. And to make things even more bonkers, he threw some Huracan headers on it and paired it with a six speed manual transmission. And he did all of this in his garage. According to Joel, it's the best sounding station wagon on the internet. And guess what? I don't necessarily disagree. And if you know of a better sounding station wagon, let us know in the comments. But uh, let's suppose for the sake of argument, you're not interested in a Lamborghini powered station wagon. Teach their own. Let me present you with something a little bit more 
Japanese. I'm talking about B is for builds, R35 swapped, R34, AKA the R69. Nice. All right, this isn't just some simple engine swap, obviously. That would have been too easy from a boy, Chris. And if you know anything about his builds, he likes to go pretty extreme psycho mode on them. He's been sued. His Skyline uses the entire chassis from a wrecked R35 combined with the abandoned shell of an R34. Here's the thing. Those don't just stick together like Legos taped together. Problem number one, R35 is longer, so it had to be shortened. Problem number two, the R34 is skinnier, so it had to be girthed up a little bit. In fact, the whole build is just a big list of problems that Chris had to figure out. And unsurprisingly, motherfucker did it. Motherfucker did it, dude. He figured it out because he's smart, okay? And he's got conviction, okay? And he doesn't give up. And now he's got a modern supercar combined with one of the coolest looking Japanese cars ever. And of course, it's Midnight Purple. And that's why it's got a spot on the list. So in this world that we're in currently in this video, a GTR body swap kind of makes sense. Let's talk about a body swap that makes no sense at all. Talk about rich rebuilds, come and swapped, six wheel Tesla. You already know that this dude has an LS swap Tesla, so how do you raise the bar after that? You make it ironic and funny. You put a freaking Cummins in a Tesla, baby. He got his hands on a wrecked Model 3, which he has introduced to a 4BT. That's a four cylinder turbo diesel that you would have found in a bread truck from the 1980s. So it's not exactly a super powerful motor, but make no mistake, this boy's got torque. Because he wants this torque puppy to be able to tow, he's putting it on top of a dually frame from a Chevy Square Bar pitch up, baby. Again, not very easy to do, but not outside of Rich's capabilities. This guy has done some insane stuff. Now this project is very much still in progress. I can't wait to see how it turns out. And also it's called the Model D, like D-list. I see you, Rich. I see you flirting, dude. And that's why it deserves a spot on the list. Thanks for naming your car after me, bud. If you think we're done with diesel swaps in this video, you're wrong. Dead wrong! Coming in hot with a spicy cum and swap is Weston Champlin, which sounds like the name of a freaking trophy. Last time we did a video like this, you guys wouldn't stop commenting about this build, and I totally understand why now. This guy is freaking nuts. His videos are insane. Of course, I'm talking about his cum and swapped S550 Mustang, AKA the smoke stay. Personally, because it's a come and swap, I would have called it the stang. Unlike Rich Rebuilds' Tesla, this muscle stang ain't built for towing, baby. It's built for rolling coal down the drag strip and doing big black and white smoky burnouts. And it does a pretty good job of both of those things. Just listen to this horsey purr. It's got a 12 valve V8 with two spinny boys that make too much power for its own good, according to Weston. That's a quote. And apparently it was a lot of work to get this thing running correctly. Good on you, Weston. You earned your spot on the list. But this list ain't done. Weston's Mustang is sick, but it's only got two turbos. But you know what's better than two? Four. You know what's better than four? Mm-hmm. Eight. That's right, I'm talking about an Octo Turbski LS swapped Ford Muscle Stang built by Kyle from Boosted Lifestyle. This is a car that would make Nadia Solomon proud. So how do you even fit eight turbos under the hood of a car that didn't even come with one turbo when it was born? You don't. All eight of these turbos, plus the radiator, plus the four exhaust stacks, all protrude out of the engine bay. But just look at the symmetry. It's a work of art. And it sounds like art too. You know what art that you can hear is called? Freaking music. And this engine is freaking music to my ears. Listen to the way this glorious octet screams. As we all know, building is only half the battle. The real challenge 
comes with tuning. Ask me how I know. Now, I cannot imagine the difficulty of tuning a car with the wrong engine and eight different turbos. But that somehow did not stop Kyle from doing this anyway. And that is exactly why we're slapping it on the list. Thank you, Max. Eight turbos is flashy, but it might not be the most practical way to light up a set of tires. A supercharger, on the other hand, is a great way to light up multiple sets of tires. That's right, because our next car isn't even a car, it's a truck. Gotcha! It's a six-wheeled Chevy C10 built by Brad DeBerti and his dad, Doug. You got a dad? Congratulations! Must be nice. This ridiculous pickup truck is powered by an LSX with a five liter Whipple supercharger. And this truck makes a thousand sturdy, muscular, buff horses on pump gas. All right, but you're probably not looking under the hood of this thing because you're probably looking at that big old bed back there. Or should I say the lack of bed? Because most of it was cut to fit two sets of rear wheels and power is sent to all four of them. So I guess technically this is a rear wheel drive, four wheel drive vehicle. It also has a massive splitter, a chassis mounted wing and bright red wheels to match the superchargers, ITBs. Now, unlike many SEMA builds that are slapped together at the last minute, this is a well orchestrated build that absolutely destroys tires. So if you like it, maybe head over to Brad's channel and help him hit 100,000 subs, okay? Maybe go help Brad out reach a milestone. By the way, I want to give an official Donut Underground Car of the Week shout out to Travis Howie, a man with two first names. He posted this sick rat rod drag car in the Post Your Car channel on our server. And if you want your car there, and potentially here, or you just want to join a community of car enthusiasts, hit the join button uh, below and learn more about Donut Underground. No commitment, you just want to learn more. All right, guys, it's been a long road. We got one last vehicle. On the spectrum of builds, we've been all over the place today. But this final one is definitely the most extreme. I promise, and I would never lie to you. It might even be the biggest build on YouTube. Coming in at 15 feet tall with not one, but two Duramax diesel engines. We got our boy Whistling Diesel's Monster Max 2. Whistling Diesel is one of my favorite YouTubers. Now besides being a capybara enthusiast, Cody likes trucks. And this is one heck of a truck. Let's start with the tires, shall we? Sure, it makes sense, they're on the bottom. It sits on some of the biggest agricultural tires that Goodyear has to offer, each one weighing over 1,500 pounds. The axles together weigh about 26,000 pounds. They each have their own engine and transmission. The fuel tanks, which are shaped like freaking missiles, weigh 500 pounds each. Without fuel, the whole thing comes to about 40,000 pounds. That's 15 Kia Souls. Americans will measure in anything but the metric system. It's got 12 shocks, a 55 gallon oil drum, and four transmission coolers. And it honestly looks nice. I'm sure that he's gonna get into all sorts of weird trouble with this thing. It's kind of his MO. But the real cherry on the top of the whipped cream of this Sunday is the literal battleship horn mounted on the roof. All right, give her a little chirp. Uh -huh. Now this big old truck might not be everybody's three liter of Fago, but it definitely earns a spot at the top of the monolist. Your move, Rainbow Chic. There's a lot of cars on YouTube, a lot of builds, a lot of creators. If we missed your favorite one, let us know in the comments. There are so many of these bonker vehicles here on the tube. That's what I call it. And we want to keep featuring our favorite ones because you know what? It's a community, all right? It's a community. And we're all friends here. Let me know who you think deserves a spot on the monolist. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, hit that like button so you don't miss anything. I love you. Uh